Hello everyone, this is Radhu Sudhan Raj. This is 1st September and today we are going to discuss three main issues. First one is that on 15th August from the Lal Kila, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that he is going to replace this Soviet style planning uh, with some kind of market reform and how he is going to do that he said that he wants to dismantle the planning commission which is kind of he says that which is uh, which is an institution of old Soviet style central planning and he is going to basically he says that he wants to replace that with some kind of uh, market based institution some kind of market reform so what he wants to do is that he wants to replace the planning commission with a with some kind of a think tank which comprises you know 10 experts and these 10 experts are you know basically economists and sociologists and social workers and, and people like that and uh, he's saying he's basically trying to sell this particular idea of his this is a market based reform and this is what is going to replace the Soviet style central planning and the central planning commission so we'll you know we'll dissect that thing whether whether this kind of think tank of 10 people who is going to basically advise the prime minister you know it represents the market reforms then i'm going to talk about this newly launched scheme uh of narendra modi Janudhan yojana where he's saying that something like 7.5 crore people are going to be given a bank account their bank account will be open and they'll be given some kind of insurance cover also we'll talk about that in a while and then uh, he's uh, right now on Japan's visit so we'll talk about that he's in Japan for uh, three major purposes first is the defense deal second one is the uh, civil nuclear some kind of pact with the Japanese government and infrastructure investment so let's begin our discussion with this planning commission uh, uh, thing Modi is saying that he's going to replace Soviet style planning so what he's saying that he announced uh, plans to replace the planning commission, uh, replace the planning commission, a lingering vestige of India's early attempt to mimic the Soviet command economy with a modern institution to reflect a shift to a market-based economy where, he's, where the states were the main drivers of growth rather than a central body so he's saying that uh, he wants to move away from this Soviet command economy type central planning to some kind of a uh, market based economy where instead of central Delhi doing planning the states are going to do planning uh, we envision the proposed institution as one that caters to the aspiration of 21st century India and strengthen participation of the states, Modi said in his Twitter post. The decision to involve the he also is inviting public public's idea that how this particular market based you know institution is going to work. The decision to involve the public is the latest of Modi's efforts to break down governance structure that Indians see as falling or failing them. Okay, so whether this uh, creation of a think tank of 10 people or something like that or replacing the central planning, you know, uh, a commission, central planning, planning commission with some kind of, uh, I'm hearing, expenditure commission or this, this think tank or whether uh, loosening, you know, for example, the grip of the center and allowing the state to plan everything reflects a shift from the Soviet style central command planning to market based economy and the answer is simply no <laughs> I, you know I, I just cannot understand that people you know, you know takes this kind of thing coming from Modi's mouth seriously because re replacing one central planning agency from center and replacing it with another one maybe state based is not a market market based economy move you know in market there is no central planning in market there is no state in market there is no federal structure no government nothing it's just simply market means buyers and sellers voluntarily exchanging trading their private property titles means the private property which they own so for example if i want to buy a tie I'll go to a store where the ties are selling and I'm just going to buy a tie from them 
going to give them my money and that's market. There is nobody you know, planning even at the state level, right? Nobody's planning at the Delhi level, but nobody's planning even at the Gujarat state level, like nobody's planning from Gandhinagar. So I just don't understand that he is saying that I want to give more power to the state. So how state planning is different from central's planning? Again, it's central planning, right? A center is planning or a state is planning doesn't really matter. It still is central planning. So Modi doesn't understand what central planning is. And this is no way market-based economy. There is nothing like market-based economy. There is a market economy or socialism, pure. That's it. We don't have any other in-between way. And, it, and remember what Ludwig von Mises said, any middle-of-the-road policy will ultimately result into full-fledged socialism. So we are you know, either having full-fledged market economy where there is no state, where there is no central government, nothing, simple buyers and sellers voluntarily agreeing to trade goods and services, that's market. We don't need anything that, or we are going to have basically central planning either coming from the federal structure or going to come from the state. So there is nothing like that that you are going to have, uh, you know, you're going to replace it by that. It's not replacing. Basically, we are not replacing, we are not replacing uh, uh, any kind of central planning with any kind of market-based economy. It's all pure baloney coming from Modi's, you know, mouth, you know. Uh, and he is inviting public's opinion about that. So now our lives are going to be dictated by public opinion. What's so good about having public's opinion, right? Uh, what is so good about, let's say, that you know somebody else, you know, having having the power to control my own life, you know, if somebody is capable enough of ruling over my life and taking decisions regarding my life, then that person is me myself. And similarly for you, my viewers, you know, if somebody can decide for your life, then it's you. Nobody else, you know, inviting public opinion is like crazy. You're going to ask this crowd, mad crowd. And how we are going to run this country, how we're going to run this economy. Well, it's they don't have any idea. Nobody has any idea. As I said in my past, you know, analysis also that even God comes from you know heaven, even he will not be able to plan everybody's you know life. You know, that's impossible. Only a free market capitalist economy where individuals are planning for themselves is going to work. That is real market-based economy, not based, market economy. There's nothing like market-based economy. So this whole idea that they're going to replace, you know, central, you know, planning commission with some kind of, you know, team of 10 people is a move in the direction of market-based economy is all, a baloney is all wrong. It's just trying to fool people. You know, no Arvind Subramaniam or no Jagdish Bhagwati or no Arvind Panagiriya, all these economists or social logists will have any clue whatsoever that what we want in our life. So if they are going to replace the central planning commission, then that's not the move in the direction of market. So forget about that, you know. Narendra Modi is fooling everybody, like he's fooling people since uh, election campaign, right? And now recently they're saying that the GDP has grown by 5.7% in the first quarter. So that is the achievement of Narendra Modi. Well, how can we say that? GDP is a manipulated number, as I said, if the government is going to print a lot of money, because GDP is what? You know, it's a total production express the market value. So the price goes up of all these products, GDP will go up. So we don't know whether it's production that is rising or the basically the price is going up. So if they print a lot of money, they create inflation, they'll say that's economic growth. And we know that inflation is not economic growth. And in any case, all these statistics are basically manipulated. So, you know, there is a green kind of stark kind of contradiction. On one side, they're saying that the major part of the GDP is that the mining sector is doing very well and at the same time we are hearing news that most of the power generating plants in India which are running thermal based they are running very low on coal supply around two days coal supply reserves that they are having so how is that possible if the mining industry is performing very well then why this power plant generators you know power plants are running very low on coal supply so what are they mining I think what are they mining is that they are mining the data, the statistics, right, to fool the public, to show that everybody that, okay, 100 days of Narendra Modi government uh, is bringing some kind of right? 
But as I said, anything goes wrong, and then we will see that these guys are going to be tested. Let's say that you know, market is the stock market is zooming high right now, asset bubble, as I'm saying. Anytime it is going to pop, and when that will pop, suppose there is 50 60 percent correction, then we will see how Narendra Modi is going to handle that particular problem. Anyway, uh, then then uh, he talked about he has launched this Janathan Yojana where 7.55 crore people are going to have their own bank account which government is going to open for them. My question is that what is so great about opening a bank account, right? Many people, around 48% of Indians live their life without any kind of banking services. They don't need it. In fact, it is better that we basically trade in cash because that is how we can keep our transactions private. And remember, keeping transactions private doesn't mean that we are doing some kind of criminal activity. It's just a matter of privacy. I don't want people to know that what kind of the transactions I'm carrying out. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing any kind of so-called illegal activities or not. These activities can be perfectly legal, it's just a matter of my privacy. See, the real reason why government wants everybody to open a bank account is that then they can very easily track all of us, whatever transaction we are doing, what kind of earning we are having. And once we are into their net, once into, we are into their financial bracket, their you know, certain, you know, banking industry system, then they are going to grab us and all, then they are going to make us like a milk cow and ultimately a beef cow. Then they are going to tax us very heavily. So they want to track us. They want to control the whole system, right? That's why they want to bring everybody into the banking system. It, it, it has nothing to do of, 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 you know, kind of what Modi was saying that removing the untouchability of banking service. No, these people who are not using banks, they're doing it deliberately, right? They want, for example, they want to save their taxes. There's nothing wrong with that. They want to, you know, save the hard-earned money. They don't want to kind of show up those things. It's pretty good. As I said, you know, using cash is better than using banking services most of the time. Because once you are into their system, you can't escape. You know, they are going to track us, they are going to control us, and then they are going to fleece us. They're going to track, you know, tax all of us very heavily. That's the main reason. They are saying that they are going to provide something like 1 lakh rupees insurance cover for all these bank accounts. Well, I'm saying that from where they are going to get the money to cover all this insurance of all these 7.5 crore or whatever bank accounts are going to open before 1st January or something like that. Well, obviously, the answer is that the money is going to come from the taxpayers. Right, so suppose that most of these poop people who are going to open their bank account, they don't have enough money. What are you going to do with a bank account when you don't have an income? Right, a poor person who doesn't even get you know 40 50 rupees every day to you know, you know eat his dinner or lunch, uh, what is he going to do with this bank account if he's not having any money to deposit over there? No earning whatsoever. So, what I'm saying is that. Suppose if they default on their deposit accounts or their bank accounts, then who's going to pay for that? Of course, the taxpayers. So ultimately, the taxpayers are screwed no matter what happens. So there is no you know, real you know, big deal in opening all these bank accounts. It's, as I said, it is better that we stay out of the system and deal more in cash. But that's how we can you know, keep our transactions private. And that is more important in today's world where bankrupt governments are held bent on you know try to try to juice us, try to milk us of our hard earned money. They want to tax us, all the governments because they are bankrupt. So that's why they want to bring everybody into the tax net. And that is the main purpose of opening all these bank accounts. Okay, so that is about Janadana Yojana. Last as I say, uh, Prime Minister is on Japan's visit and since he you know he has assumed powers is constantly beating the drums of war. Most of the activities are war related. You know, major reason why he's in Japan is because of this defense deals which he wants to secure with the Japanese government. Not only that, he's trying to counter China also. We know that China is rising very fast. In fact, we have to accept the fact that China is going to be the superpower of the 21st century. So Narendra Modi, instead of trying to fight you know, a battle or a war with China is better to keep quiet and trade with them, right? So you are you are going to China basically, why? Because why? Because you know you're going to Japan, why? Right? Because you want to use Japan against China, some kind of deal. He, he recently said that he doesn't like many nations' expansionist policies. I think he should avoid this kind of statement because you know 
we India cannot afford any kind of war right now. Suppose a war is going to start, and we cannot, you know, even win a battle against China. Let's accept that fact. And we don't need any war, as I said right now. What we what we need right now is peace and trade. That's it. Uh, and another thing that he was in, I think, uh, Kyoto or he was in Kobe, I don't know which city or Tokyo, and, and he said he, he made some kind of deal over there. He's going to convert uh, Varanasi, uh, the place from where he won his Lok Sabha ticket. See, he's saying he's going to convert Varanasi into some modern high tech Japanese city. <laughs> I can only laugh. Yeah, the way in which they wanted to make Mumbai Shanghai, right? There's a lot of, you know, talk about they're going to make Mumbai like the Shanghai city. We know what kind of Shanghai city Mumbai is right now. So in a similar way, uh, Narendra Modi is saying that he's going to turn Varanasi into some kind of modern Japanese city like Tokyo or something like that. It's all stupidity, basically. Let me tell you very frankly just going to waste a lot of resources this whole project of cleaning Ganga for example using taxpayers money and everything what's the use of all that if you want to protect Ganga and want to clean Ganga then privatize its water now I cannot discuss how, how that is going to happen but you can read Walter Block's work on how to privatize water and waterways and roadways and everything so it's better that we leave it on the market but as I said Basically, Narendra Modi is beating a lot of war drums, and that's the reason why he's in Japan. And let's 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 not forget one thing right now: that since last you know two decades, Japan's economy is into recession. The country is finished right now. The economy is totally battered, you know, especially after this Fukushima disaster, nuclear plant disaster. So right now, instead of India needing Japan's help, Japan needs India's help more. So that's why Japanese are more interested into, you know, having some kind of deal with India. India is in a much better position compared to Japan. Japan is, Japan's population is also aging right now. And, you know, the saving levels are going down. They are in a big, in any case, Japan is U.S.'s satellite, you know, country. They don't have their own army or something like that. Still, American army is having a base in Okinawa. They don't have their own independent foreign policy also so what kind of defense deal Modi is you know going to do with them when they don't have control over on their foreign policy dictated by the American government but as I said they need us more than we are needing them but Modi is trying to show that you know Japan is something great Japan was great once upon a time their days are gone now right it's basically India that is rising right now so what we have to understand is that in these hundred days, Modi has done nothing substantial. It's all talk, talk, talk. And it's all trying to fool people with this so-called central planning commission, you know, replacing with a market-based institution. It's not a market-based institution. Market means market, then there is no role of government. That's what we have to understand. Okay, so I'm leaving you with that today. And, you know, as more things are happening in the Indian economy, I'm going to come and analyze all of those things. Markets are right now rising rapidly because, you know, as I said, it's been the bubble. The asset bubble is blowing up bigger and bigger. I think it's going to bust pretty soon. We don't know when. Nobody can predict the future, but it will because it's, it's artificially high level. Anyway, so when something will happen, something important, I'll come and I'll discuss all those ideas with you. Right now, thank you very much for watching me. I'm leaving you with that. Good night.